Okay. Uh, Dr. Heather Al Abdullah is from United Arab Emirates, and he's going to talk about uh, cellulose uh, argold made from dead palm wood for heat insulation in uh, construction. Okay, so the floor is yours. Yes. Okay, uh, how do we? Next. This, this one for next, mm -hmm. this one for back, and this as a point. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, okay. Uh, let me go back. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Haider Al Abdullah. I'm from uh, UAE University, and I work under the supervision of uh, Professor Basim Abu Jadail. And uh, today I will be speaking about my uh, PhD topic, which is cellulose aerogels made from date palm wood for heat insulation in construction. Okay. Okay, so to begin with, as you can see here in the GCC region, and especially in KSA, United Arab Emirates, and the other uh, date palm producing countries, Date palm trees are widely planted and spread and farmed. Uh, these plants, as we, have seen, uh, as we have seen in the previous days, they produce, of course, uh, important fruits for human consumption, which is dates and their uh, derivatives, such as sugar, syrups, and many other products that are important for human and food consumption. However, they produce also huge agricultural waste. This agricultural waste mostly is the uh, date wood. It is estimated that each date, uh, each uh, palm tree produces around 15 kilograms of wood per year. Now, this agricultural waste, uh, they, they need to be utilized. On the other hand, we have another problem, which is in, ex in countries with extreme weathering conditions, such as the GCC, where we have extreme uh, hot weather, or in Europe and North America, where we have extreme cold weather, there are continuous uh, heating and cooling of the building to maintain a livable conditions within the buildings uh, and within the walls. Now, um, to solve this problem, there is something called heat insulation that's placed in the walls to uh, preserve the heat and reduce the energy loss. Uh, the problem is that some of these insulations, or actually the majority of them, are derived from fossil fuels, such as expanded and extruded polystyrene, which are derived from petroleum. And on the other hand, uh, mineral wool and the glass wool in the process of their production or their use, they can use some, uh, they can cause some respiratory issues. Now, what's the aim of my project? Uh, the aim is to, to solve both problems simultaneously. So at the same time, we want to uh, solve the problem of the huge agricultural waste that's produced from the date palm trees wood, and also provide sustainable and biodegradable heat insulators. So uh, the project is about fabricating uh, cellulose aerogels from the wood that's obtained from the date palm waste. What is cellulose and what are aerogels? That will be next. Okay, so cellulose actually is an organic compound and it is the backbone and the main component of the wood. Moreover, it is the main, uh, the main uh, component of the cell wall of green plants. And uh, this makes it the most abundant organic uh, polymer on earth. On the other hand, aerogels, as you can see there, uh, it's an, uh, let me see, point. Yes, here, this is an aerogel. Aerogels actually are highly porous uh, material that has low density, extremely high surface area, low thermal conductivity, and low electrical conductivity. Aerogels, they can be made from uh, different materials. There are silica aerogels, carbon aerogels, and cellulose aerogels. And of course, cellulo cellulose aerogels is the most uh, uh, common bio uh, aerogels. Bio aerogels means that aerogels derived from sustainable uh, and uh, biodegradable materials. Okay, so how do, we do, how do we prepare aerogels? First one, we have here the date palm vipers obtained from the date palm wood waste, from, uh, from the wood uh, agricultural waste. Then we do size reduction, or uh, let's say crushing or grinding, to, uh, to make it into powder. The next step is the cellulose extraction. As I mentioned, cellulose is the main component, other two being uh, uh, lignin and hemicellulose. So the first step is the removal of lignin. Uh, this uh, is done by a process called delignification by immersing the powder in a solvent containing alkaline treatment, usually an AOH, under specific concentration, duration, and temperature. 
Moreover, we do the uh, bleaching, which is the removal of the hemicellulose using sodium chloride, also under specific conditions of uh, temperature, uh, duration, and concentration. Here we can see, uh, here's the, uh, the wood powder, here's the delignified wood powder, and here's the pure cellulose, without lignin and without hemicellulose. Okay, so the next step is to dissolve cellulose in ionic liquid. After we dissolve cellulose in ionic liquid, we will obtain gel-like material. This gel-like material, we put it in a mold with a cylindrical shape, disc shape. The next, is, next step is the coagulation. In the coagulation, the ionic liquid will come out and water will come inside in the aerogel due to osmosis, due to the high concentration of the ionic liquid and low concentration of water. After that, we, we get what we call cellulose hydrogels, which is basically a network of cellulose particles connected with water. The final step is freeze drying, and it can be replaced by supercritical CO2 drying to obtain the cellulose aerogels. Cellulose aerogels are sponge-like material that enjoys a high porosity, high surface area, and low thermal conductivity. Now, uh, I mentioned that we dissolve uh, cellulose in ionic liquid. Some might ask, why do we use ionic liquid? Is that because of cellulose, it has a highly complex structure that has intra and intramolecular bonds, which makes it very difficult for common solvents, such as ethanol, methanol, water, or what's called uh, organic solvent, to penetrate these uh, cellulose chains and dissolve cellulose. Therefore, complex uh, solvents, such as salt hydrates, and ionic liquids are ca capable of dissolving cellulose. In our study, we use BMIMCL, which is a type of ionic liquid. Of course, there are other ionic liquids, but we, in our study, we use uh, this one. Now, how, what's, what are the two systems we prepared? The first one is we obtained lab-grade cellulose from Sigma Aldrich, that is uh, highly pure, in order to use it as a reference for our work. The second system is the cellulose obtained from date palm wood, that's uh, the second aerogels. The concentration are three, five, seven, and nine weight percent. That is of cellulose with respect to the solvent, which is ionic liquid. And uh, the aerogels were tested for the important properties of uh, thermal insulation, which are thermal conductivity and the density. In addition, material characterization such as FTIR, XRD, and scanning electron microscope were also applied to further understand the material. Okay, here we can see the density and the thermal conductivity. For the aerogels obtained from date palm wood, we can see the trend is clear, whereas the, um, as the concentration increase, the density of the aerogel increases. For lab-grade aerogels, it increased up to 7%, then dropped at the 9%. Now, this needs further study and further investigation to know why uh, the, the peak was at the 7% 7, 7 concentration, not the 9. However, the range for the thermal conductivity, it is from around 0 0.07 to maximum 0 0.15, which may, uh, sorry, of the density from 0 0.07 to 0 0.15 gram per centimeter cubed, which makes it very suitable for uh, thermal insulation. On the other hand there, we have the thermal conductivity. As we can see that the thermal conductivity trend is uh, almost identical to the density trend. So as the concentration of the aerogel, inc uh, the cellulose uh, uh, increases, we have higher thermal conductivity. For the lab-grade aerogels, it increases up to 7%, then decreases on the 9%. However, the range is from 0 0.035 up till to 0 0.07, which is much, uh, very, much comparable to the commercial heat insulation, such as expanded and extruded polystyrene. Here we have the FTIR and XRD. It was done for the FTIR for the 3% lab-grade cellulose and 3% cellulose obtained from date palm. We can see that there's a huge peak of the OH and other peaks for C double bond O and CO corresponding to the content of the cellulose. Moreover, uh, XRD test was uh, done and we can see a peak of around 22, which corresponds to the, to the content of the cellulose in all the components, the 3%, the 7%, and the 3 and 7% obtained from the date palm wood. Okay, finally, we have the scanning electron microscope. In the scanning electron mi microscope, we can see the structure of the aerogel. It is a highly porous material that uh, consists of uh, sheets above each other. Here we have the 3% uh, 
samples, aerogel obtained from the lab grade sigma aldrich cellulose. You can see that there are a lot of voids, which makes the cellulose aerogels uh, highly porous and, has the, and enjoys low thermal conductivity. For the 3% of the date palm, uh, cellulose uh, aerogels obtained from date palms, we can see that there are small residuals or particles, and uh, the, the, the structure is not as organized, but it is uh, similar in terms of the density and uh, the overall structure. Here we have the 7% uh, from lab grade and 7% from the date palm air, uh, cellulose aerogels. We can see that uh, at 7% it has higher density, higher material, and uh, it's also highly porous. Now this, this higher density causes uh, higher thermal conduct uh, conductivity and also it, uh, it makes the material uh, more, uh, more dense and uh, the structure is more complicated. Now, uh, we, we conclude from this work that cellulose aerogels obtained from date palm wood that was uh, extra uh, turned into cellulose are highly effective for this application. They enjoy uh, low thermal conductivity and uh, low density, which is uh, similar in, uh, in behavior to the commercial uh, uh, heat insulators such as expanded and extruded polystyrene. It is a renewable, biodegradable, and environmentally friendly heat insulators. Uh, however, how can we further enhance the process? As I mentioned, for the extraction of uh, cellulose from, uh, 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 from date palm trees, we use uh, sodium chloride and uh, NaOH. These can be replaced by green methods such as ionic liquids. And uh, finally, other tests that help to further understand our material should be conducted, such as BET analysis, which shows the surface area and the porosity. That's still yeah, uh, yet, uh, it's, uh, yet to be done. Moreover, mechanical properties such as tensile and compression also need to be further studied to uh, evaluate the mechanical integrity of the uh, cellulose aerogels. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, that was the presentation. Any questions, please? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. We have uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. So salam. I have a question. My name is Muhammad Hamid. I'm from Khalifa University, Abu Dhabi. Good. So the first question I have uh, regarding you mentioned the uh, green methods uh, that you are going to use. I, I, I suggest perhaps apart from uh, reducing uh, uh, environmental effects, yes. maybe it's also to reduce the cost. Yes. So what methods are you going to look into? Uh, that's the first question. Second question, on your data on the density and uh, thermal conductivity. Yes. Uh, I can go back to the slide? Or can we go back to the slide? Yes. Uh, uh, it's not showing the slides. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's fine. I have... Uh, yes, yes, here. here yeah. Yes. Yes. So in the next... Uh, Question is on the so this question is about uh, which green methods are we going to use? So the other question mm -hmm. is on the uh, data and uh, the data on the density and thermal conductivity. Yes. yes. Uh, you say that uh, you are going to look on how why it uh, decreased. Yes. Perhaps there is uh, some change, and uh, you could uh, probably maybe repeat the experiment and see the standard deviation of. Mm -hmm. uh, this, da this uh, data that you have. Yes. Another question is on, uh, another comment is the SEM images. Please, can you? So the SEM images, I mean, the quality of the images, I don't think I will, uh, it's very satisfying. Mm. Uh, especially the next, because of first thing, the, how is it called, the, mag the magnification is very, very low. Mm. Uh, uh, another thing, maybe you could see you could have the, because uh, uh, during ionic uh, liquid preparation or maybe bleaching method, you could have the nanofibers inside the, inside the, uh, yeah. I mean the final product you have. Here. So maybe if you could, especially the second one, sorry. Can yeah, you yeah. Re no, the second uh, SEM image. The second, this, p this yeah, page. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. maybe you could have, uh, 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 I mean, uh, nanoporous structure, if mm. you zoom in better, mm. to yeah. see what is uh, you have. Yeah. And uh, I think that's all. And then you compare your data with PET, it's fine. Thank you, yeah. Uh, for the first question, actually, 
regarding the uh, use of green methods, we uh, aim to use green uh, ionic liquids, which is BMIMCL, and uh, those can be regenerated, the solvents, and used again for dissolving more cellulose. Uh, so that's, uh, that's why, and we aim to enhance the process by using ionic liquid in the extraction of cellulose from the date palm wood, not using the traditional NaOH and sodium chloride. This is yet to be done in the future. Uh, regarding the density uh, and thermal conductivity, actually the test was repeated. Uh, so th those are duplicates, so, and it shows the same trend. That's why I said it needs to be further studied. Maybe it reached the saturation at 7%, maybe at 9%, there's some residuals. And uh, for the SEM, thank you for the comment. Uh, maybe we will try to do it in another department or another uh, university, maybe at your university, at Khalifa University. You're welcome. To, uh, to get uh, better pictures. Uh, final comment, uh, any more? I, I yeah, forgot no, to answer. It's fine, I think. Yeah. Uh, so regarding, uh, maybe you, uh, apart from doing uh, this chemical treatment using other green solvent, mm -hmm. I would suggest to you maybe you should uh, look into mechanical processes. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, At any I time, mechanical yeah. processes are much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Can we solve that? Let's ask Dan our speaker uh, again. Thank you thank very you. much.